Hello and welcome to the Bain Picks video for Game 4 of the NBA Finals. I am your host, Matthew Amato, joined here by my two NBA experts, Jason Gilbo and Drew the Caveman Norn. Uh, you know, his 15th location for these NBA playoffs, he's now in some kind of hut. Uh, I, God knows where, but he's out there. So, Drew, I'm going to go to you first um, so you don't get eaten by a dinosaur. Three and a half. <laughs> In favor of the Warriors at home, how are you feeling about it? Uh, I, I feel great about it. Um, if I'm a Warriors fan, I'd feel really good about it. I know Boston's been electric on the road. They're 8-3 and three this postseason on the road, which better better road record than home record. But, you know, Golden State, the sense of urgency is going to be as high as it's ever been. They don't want to go down 3-2 and then have to win again in Boston. To win one in Boston is hard enough, but to win two in Boston is not not going to be very, very easy. So I think the sense of urgency is definitely going to be there. The Celtics have shown really no ability at all to stop Steph Curry. And I do, I am expecting a much bigger game from the supporting cast. Wiggins, Thompson, Poole, Green, who has been absolutely abysmal so far in these finals. I'm expecting him to show up. I'm expecting these other guys to shoot a little bit better. Um, so I'm definitely expecting the supporting cast to do better. And, you know, really what it comes down to, you know, it's like I've talked about multiple times, free throw shooting, rebounding, turnovers. And Golden State last game did have uh, one more turnover than Boston, but they rebound, they out-rebounded Boston significantly. And they also shot better from the free throw line. So I definitely think right now in this moment, uh, Golden State has a slight advantage and they're probably feeling pretty good right now with series tied up and two of the next three coming at home. Yeah. I mean, we talked about game one, or at least I talked about, I felt like personally as a Warriors fan, the Celtics matched up so well that it was kind of their series to lose. Um and what would let them down is them not playing their best. And I don't feel like they have, but I also feel like the Warriors have it. It's been a weird series where neither team is, I think, completely played up to their potential. I would say I don't think either team's even played like 90% of their potential. We, like we've said, terrible series from Draymond Green. Um, Clay Thompson's been had a few moments, but it's been pretty bad. Um, and then on the other side, the Celtics, they've had moments, but Tatum's been turning the ball over. Like you said, they couldn't do, Jason. So how are you feeling uh, going into this one? I actually feel really good as the Celtics. Um, I, I game five, game four is obviously going to be disappointing because I think the Celtics are actually the better team. Um, it was just a legendary Curry game, and we also just had an awful dread of full fourth quarter performance. Um, Tatum went missing for the final basically eight minutes of that game. They couldn't get a rebound, and those were the disappointing parts really from it. Um, I don't actually really expect, I don't expect much from the supporting cast anymore. I, I just don't think Thompson is continuously that same player. Like I think he obviously had one of a great green three. Um, but for the most part, I think you're basically going to get him in the 17 to 25 point range and that's fine. But when you have other guys, you know, they're not basically scoring over five points a game, you know, it's not going to matter. Um, Draymond picked up, I think, a lot of kind of consistency in game four. I mean, eight assists, nine rebounds, he had four steals. He was obviously a warrior where you kind of need him most. And the Celtics just collapsed in the fourth. Like, I, they actually had a pretty decent third quarter, even though they still lost it 30 to 24. Um, I think Horford and Williams have a bigger impact on the offensive side. I think there's going to be adjustments made for the Celtics to deal with Looney, who – who had a really, really good game four um, in those 28 minutes. And I I don't expect Poole to really kind of pop off for 20 plus. I think basically game four, what he did was kind of actually just enough for what they needed. So I think this is more about really the Celtics offense. That that 10 point lead, I, that 10 point game, I feel like is a little bit misleading of how close it actually was just because that final stretch got away from them. But I think the Celtics have proven that they've been able to go on the road and win these games. I think we're going to get a more consistent backcourt from Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown. And I don't expect to have the rebound differential be what it is. It was 55-42. And basically, if we kind of continue the same boat of Boston starts off these games super strong, 
And then it obviously gets close in the third quarter with, with the Warriors. Um, I don't, I don't foresee them having back to back awful fourth quarters. And I think as we've seen throughout these playoffs and the fact that they come off losses, those adjustments are always made and executed so well that I actually like the value on them at plus 40, because it's not, not too often that we really get these teams at plus value. And each game for me, has basically been, I feel like a 50, 50 shot. So I, I I like them to clean it up a little bit and I think we're going to see a better game out of Tatum. And I think we're going to see a little bit more concerted effort to block Curry. And I still just don't, I don't love the supporting role players from the Warriors as much as, as everyone else. So um, they just haven't shown me enough throughout really this playoffs outside that Denver series. And this is a completely different team. So um, yeah, uh, still give me this value on, on plus 140. I think this is actually a great number. I feel like this entire series has been, and this is not to dumb it down because there's a million factors, but every mini run in every single game, I feel like it's been dictated by which team can hit their threes. And I was going to say open threes, but honestly, I feel like the, the Celtics have been playing fantastic defense at the perimeter. It's just the Warriors are really good at shooting. And for the Celtics, it's like they have open threes. I don't think we've we've seen at times very short spurts the Warriors cover them, but for the most part, it's open threes. And it's like when they start missing a couple in the row, the Warriors go on the run. When they make a few in the row, in a row, they go on a run. And it, I really do feel like this series is going to come down to who hits those open threes. Um, and for the most part, it's going to be Boston. Like if Al Horford's hitting his open threes, if Marcus Smart is going to be able to take a few threes and hit them. That's how the Celtics quickly go on the, you know, those 16-0 runs and uh, win this game in Golden State. And again, it's not to minimize it. There's so many other factors. But at the end of the day, you got to score more points than your team. And I really do think it's just going to come down to making a percentage of those open shots. Because they're going to have, I mean, one of the first stats Braxton brought up, you brought up, Jason, is just how many open threes Boston was going to have in the series and they're going to continue to have them in this series. I I don't think it's going to change. It's just making them. All right. So, player props. Drew, what you going with? Yeah, I think I'm going to take Tatum under points. Um he has been pretty bad this series and it's kind of been masked by a few moments, I think. But you know, he's averaging like 22.3 points per game in this series. He's got a plus minus of minus six through four games. This is not, you know, not the, the quality of basketball on both ends of the floor that we've come to really expect from him. But unfortunately, that's just the reality right now. I mean, averaging 22 points in the, in the NBA Finals as a team's best player is not – it's not going to cut it. And that's, you know, another thing that concerns me about ball Austin right now is they, they have had to have role guys step up and have these big games, you know, the Horford's smarts guys that, you know, really that shouldn't be their calling card. They should be chipping in 10 to 12, you know, every game. And that's kind of it. They, they, you should not have to rely on them for, you know, a substantial amount of offensive output. So that scares me a little bit, but um, you know, I know people are going to look at this and be like, Tatum 26 and a half. That's great value. You know, he's always hovering around 28 and a half. It seems, but he just, you know, throughout the course of the, of the NBA final, I'm just not, I'm not thrilled with this play. And I think golden state, again, this is game five. This is what I think is one of the most important games in a series. Honestly, I think it's incredibly difficult. Now Boston has showed they can win back to back to, you know, take a series over when, when it's three, two, not in their favor, but I still think game five is one of the most important, important series short of a closeout game. I'm just not loving what I'm seeing from him. And I think Jalen Brown, he's kind of ready for the moment right now. It's Jalen Brown. Um, he's been he's been playing pretty well. He's been guarded by Draymond a ton, still hitting really tough shots. So I'd look at Jason Tatum under and Jalen Brown over probably for this game. Jason, Not yeah, uh, Drew 
Drew brought up a good point. Uh, Tammy struggled. Um, Wiggins has done a great job on him. They've been able to kind of make life difficult and force. That's why there are so many open threes for everybody else. And that's why his assist numbers are so high. Uh, unfortunately, his assist numbers are juiced up quite a bit. Um, but he, he brought up Jalen Brown, and I like over two and a half threes at minus 125. Um, Jalen Brown's just had a ton of good looks. And as he's mentioned, Draymond Green's been on him. He's been able to kind of attack pool in some moments, and he's been able to have some open threes a lot in this series just because of the fact that he's, you know, basically been an open guy. So there's been so much attention on, on Jason Tatum. Um, you know, he's hit this in two of the four games. He's hit, you know, obviously, you know, two threes in each of the four games. Uh, his volume continues to be sky high, six, eight, nine, eight attempts. I don't think we're going to see a drop in those. And, you know, the fact that he's going to play 38 plus minutes, you know, you know, bypassing any sort of foul trouble. Um, I think you got a, a pretty good look at him tonight for for three three. So, which was a little bit better value on on DK. You can obviously still shop this around, but minus one twenty five is not too bad. Yeah, I like it. I think. I mean, I honestly think you could throw money on Smart and Hortford threes as well. I, it's just basically all the three pointers that aren't Tatum are going to be super open for. Uh, for Boston and it's like I don't know would you call I mean I feel like over one and a half for Horford should be a value but he did it was weird going in that game too not seeing him take any after taking what was it eight or nine in the first game and it's just been kind of random but he, he's gonna have open three-point opportunities it's whether he pulls the trigger and whether he feels confident so it's kind of like I wish I was getting plus 130 140 and over one and a half but it's weird because it's gonna be there they're gonna be open attempts for him um yeah yeah it's just it's weird like we've had him basically go missing in two of the three games and then yeah exactly you know he's uh, obviously game one we're, we're not, never gonna see him go six of eight from three again but um i think game four is kind of probably what you're looking at and i think it, it's obviously a little bit risky just because he's probably gonna get four or five attempts um but I, I mean there is definitely some value i feel like in him and smart still but yeah yeah plus 130 obviously or plus 120 probably shop it around a little bit so I'm going to go to blocks and uh, I think I'm taking a huge risk over two and a half blocks for Robert Williams at plus 155, but I don't care anymore. I just, I, I, I wasn't going to go this entire series of making videos without talking about Robert Williams blocks. He's absolutely just dominating the paint when he's on the court. I think he's, he's getting spurts where maybe he feels healthier than other spurts, if that makes sense. And you can really tell because when he, if he was 100% healthy, I feel like this series is already over. Uh, we, we've talked about it. He's completely and utterly controlling the paint, and there's nothing the Warriors can do. There's been times where it seems like he's not in the screen, on your screen, on the TV, and then all of a sudden, Curry, Thompson, Draymond, someone's blocked, and you're like, how did that happen? And it's Robert Williams being like, you know, the... Uh, What's Miss Incredible? You know, the one with the stretchy arms? Yeah, that, that's how I feel about Robert Williams right now. So I'm going over two and a half blocks. I, I really appreciate that's not over one and a half at like minus 110. I want to go for the three at plus 155. I think he gets there, um, but it, it stinks because it's like, I feel like a lot of it's really just how healthy he is for this game. So it's like if you had an inside source, which obviously we don't. <laughs> Just, I just want to ask him, be like, Robert, how do you feel? A 1 to 10 today. If I can get a 6 or better, I'm good with this prop. Uh, but, you know, I got to take the risk. I'll take plus 155. Oh, I need to hit it, you know, 40% of the time, be profitable. Any other player props? I also like, uh, yeah, I like Marcus Smart over two and a half threes. You know, the volume's been there. And this is something that he has hit in... Four of the past five, three of the past four in this series. You know, the volume's been there in every game except one. He, he had that two-point game, but he only played 25 minutes. The other games, 30 minutes, 39 minutes, 40 minutes. He's getting seven, seven, nine attempts. You know, I, I think that there's a lot of value there considering he just needs to hit three. Um and I think you're probably getting that at plus odds because that's what I'm seeing on um, yeah. FanDuel at least. So you're probably right around there on DK too as well would be my guess. So, 
yeah, I really like the value there. I think, again, we've talked about this, but Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, obviously, Draymond and Wiggins. Tatum is not getting the looks that he wants. He may try to assert himself early, but Smart's going to get open looks. It's just, is he going to knock them down? And recently he has been shooting it uh, fairly well, with the exception of the one game he had two points, like I said. But besides that, he's been doing pretty well. And I, I like the value there. Yeah. Um, Jason, you like any of the cross sport specials? You want to go Steph Curry seven plus threes and Alex Wood seven plus strikeouts? That seems very unrealistic. Yeah, no, definitely not. Um, <laughs> but I am going to write an email to DraftKings. I'm going to be like, why don't you have assist plus rebounds for Kavon Looney anywhere? Because um, they're scared. Yeah, it's where they have literally everything else listed for him, but that section, which his rebounds are seven and a half, but I don't want to take him at minus 140. I was hoping for a little bit bad, better value with the assist. Um, so if you can find him anywhere else, it's probably going to be around nine and a half, ten and a half, and a half, and I'd be probably pretty close to plus money, if not plus money. Um, I, I would take the over there. Looney's been a huge factor. And I think you can bank on him for easily hitting his assist. I mean, he might hit that on rebounds alone. But the fact that he continuously picks up two, three, four assists per game now is 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 massive. Yeah, I'm just going to also throw in the under for Clay Thompson before we leave because uh, that's just I, obligatory. That's what All this right, channel well, does. I'm off on that. Don't. I'm not co-signing yeah. that, but it's only 19 and a half. I, uh, I don't think he gets the 19 and a half in this game. On um, back-to-back games, he's worse, but like when he has three days rest, he's fine. So that's, well, that's kind of my take. This is why we got Jason. We got the deep analytics stats. It's the boat. It's if he's able to get a day on the boat, it's it helps a lot. <laughs> is he perusing through good basketball clips on Instagram and you know able to spend some time evaluating other people's ball screens? That's what that's, yeah. that's what dictates, you know, on back to back or one day's rest. He just simply doesn't have the time. Sure. But uh, <laughs> you know, when <laughs> when he can really spend some quality time going back and looking at all the uh all the all the great ball screens that are happening all over Instagram, then you know, that's not gonna make any sense at all to I, anybody who's watching this, but I am not talking for Jason or Drew, but I will say we did kind of skip over the over under. We always get people asking. I say don't bet the over-under in this game. I'd say figure out who you like um, in terms of the actual game itself and bet there or bet player props. Like, I just don't think there's been any value in the over-under. I think it's been rather unpredictable, in my opinion. If either of you disagree, feel free to jump in now before the end. I don't like the... I mean, I don't... I'm continuously not really liking totals, but... Um, I think this game's going to be pretty defensive and I think both team total unders are a little bit intriguing, but I actually think the one that intrigues me the most, maybe just because I'm on the Celtics, obviously is, is under one Oh seven and a half for the Warriors. Is a little, I mean, out of all the three bets, I think that's the closest one to their being value, but it is at minus one twenty on DK instead of minus one ten. All right. Yeah. I mean, they've, They've only hit that number once, and that was barely in game one at 108. Like, they're continuously flirting with 107, and that's what I feel like is kind of even their offense hasn't been particularly great. Um, and I, like I said, I just, I know who said it. Jordan Poole was like, we're going to have an offensive explosion soon. I, I just don't think so. Well, I think it's this definitely is, these not coming the, from him, so. No, no. <laughs> I, I, I just think these are the types of games we're going to get. So, um, 107 feels especially high, and especially for me being on the Celtics. So we got the Warriors minus three and a half for Drew and I. We got the Celtics plus 140 for Jason Gilbo. We got under 27 and a half, Jason Tatum, and over 23 and a half for Jalen Brown at minus 150, minus 120. That's coming from Drew. Over two and a half, three pointers made at minus 125 for Jalen Brown. Robert Williams, over two and a half blocks, plus 155. Over two and a half, three pointers made for Marcus Smart at plus 120. Under 107 and a half team total for Golden State Warriors. Again, coming from the Jason side, which if you're on the money line for the Celtics, I I probably place that bet as well. You're more than likely going to double. Um, I don't. 
the Warriors could lose scoring 108, but it's going to be one of those games where I feel like, again, it's kind of not close at the very end and they just let them score, but uh, I don't see it happening. All right. Thank you guys for watching. As always, you can click the subscribe button. You can click the like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't. Comment down below your favorite bets, and uh, we'll see you for game six very soon.